You're me good. Ain't no sheep going across our cattle land. We're coming through. Okay, mister, if you can beat me across the river, your Ford pickup against my prize horsey. You're on. This 76 workhorse is a Ford, the one that's built tough for lasting value, with features like super sturdy twin I-beam front suspension. Oh, we win! 64, 65, I'm getting sleepy. Uh -huh. Ford oh. means durability. 93 out of 100 Ford trucks built since 63 are still on the job. Today I'm going to mock up the triangulated four link, but before I get started, I think I really need to figure out where this gas tank is going to live. It's out of a C10, it's 25 gallons. The reason I picked this tank over, say, a Mustang tank or some other uh, four tank was that uh, this was the best fit and I could get the, uh, the largest amount of gasoline in. There are some considerations. It does hang down a little bit. I think it's going to meet the needs of what I'm looking at. One of my main considerations was that it was a fuel injected tank, so I got uh, this tank from Tanks Incorporated. It has a sending unit uh, spot in the back. It also has a spot for the uh, integrated fuel pump and pickup. And then it also has this uh, sideways facing uh, intake pipe, I guess. Rather than bring it up through the floor, I thought the best thing to do would be to bring it out the side. So I'm probably going to have to cut away a little bit of my frame, just, just for a little extra room, so the tank can go up and down. Make this serviceable so that it comes out, so I have to build some kind of bracket that bolts in from the bottom. That way the whole tank can be brought out from the bottom. I'd like to have the fuel cap come run out about here, maybe even turn up a little bit with the cap on it, old style. I think that's going to be the best look for this thing, since it is kind of a beat up old truck, and I'm more or less planning on keeping it that way. Here's the space underneath on the back side. I don't know if you can really see that, but with my measurements, it sits with the blocks that this came with about two inches off the frame, maybe a little more than two inches off the frame. And the gas filler is pretty small in diameter, so there should be enough room for a hose to go through. But again, I think I may just cut out a little bit of this area here just for a little extra room. Now that the tank is sitting where I want it, I'm going to move on to the four link. There are several options in four links. You can get heavy duty ones, you can get the medium duty ones. You can go with either a triangulated four link or a parallel bar four link. I like the uh, triangulated four link because it eliminates the need for any kind of watch link or panhard bar to keep the uh, center section centered under the car. This is kind of a general kit. It's supposed to be for the F100 this year, but um, I think these pretty much universal. Here's the mount that sits on the side of the frame. And then this link here is on the bottom of the, uh, the rear end. Has a cutout to be welded on there. These points here and here go on the frame in front of the uh, third member. And they mount on with this. And then there's some tabs for the third member along with all the bolts another hardware you need to mount it. It's rather light duty. It's not as heavy duty as I would have liked. I think for this truck, it's gonna be perfect.
four link is tacked in. I'm not sure who makes it for Helix. You gotta wonder since it's a user GUID instead of guide. And the installation instructions are more like suggestions. They even say that here. A lot of the parts are a little tight. I had to really clearance the heck out of these forward points on the upper triangulated arm to get them to even move because they were they were binding like heck. So the kit comes with one inch mild steel. The ends are only threaded on one end, so you can't really adjust them. Once you've got them mounted, you have to take them apart each time. Uh, I'm just not happy with the size of the, the bars. Even though the, uh, the rod ends are three quarter inch, I'm just not happy with the size. So to remedy that, I had these parts already. My plan was to build my own triangulated four link until I saw this one on sale and grabbed it. Now I kind of wish I just bought the pieces and put it together because that's basically what I'm going to do. So the fix is to go with some one and a quarter inch chrome molly that I have. I also picked up these rod ends from Speedway. A left hand and right handed thread, I went ahead and marked them. So I wouldn't put uh, two of the same on one rod. Also we have uh, the locking nets for both sides. And uh, these are supposed to be forged instead of cast. I don't know if the other ones are forged or cast, but uh, I assume that means these are gonna be stronger. When I first braced these in, I thought, uh, you know, more is better, right? I remember saying before that uh, there's no downside. Well, actually there is. So here we are putting in the supply hardware with the shock. So there is a downside. And the shock is pretty tall. It's going to be up in the bed. So I had an idea. So I had some half inch and some quarter inch plate, some cold rolled plate. Ended up with this bracket. It goes on something like that. And it gives us the length we want for our shock. Let me ask you, if you were going to sit your truck on one bolt, would you want to use grade 5 or something stronger? Yeah, me too. So we'll go with grade 8. This gives me the spacing I think I'm going to need. Um, I'm just going to bring this out a little bit for clearance. I'll make a bracket right about here using some uh, square tube. But um, I think that's probably the best place for that shot. I think it's going to look pretty good too.
So we're going to change out some seals. We're going to clean this out, get the surface ready for a gasket and the third member. And we're also going to press on some new bearings. This is what they call an old style Ford nine inch rear end. The most obvious way is to tell is the shape right here is a lot different than the new model, the Torino style they call it, has this kind of pattern on the bottom. You don't have this circular part. You can also tell on these is bolt hole measurement will give you an idea of which rear end you have. And with nine inch rear ends, there are different uh, axles. In this case, uh, this is a 28 spline axle. And I'm not sure, but this seal might be specific to this size. So in any event, I went ahead and ordered that number seal. Which looks like this. Suspiciously like the front of a uh, timing cover seal, although I know it's not the same, but this is the right seal. Also got some bearings. These are I measured these up, as well as a uh, some gaskets for the ends, of the housing, and of course the third member's gasket. Uh, I've run mine with or without a gasket. Sometimes just using some silicone sealer. Uh, don't get leaks. It's always worked out. But that's what we'll be doing today. This is the nine-inch third member I'm going to use. Uh, I decided to take this out of another project rear end I had. Uh, that was laying around for a car in the future at some point. So I took out the uh, third member that came with the truck, which was a 370 gear open diff nine, and replaced it with a 325 gear traction lock. One of the ways you can tell if it's a traction lock is this part of the housing. These are recessed, and that's kind of a good indicator. Another fun fact about uh, the Ford nine inch is it's, an, it's not a C-clip, so there's nothing to retain the axle other than this plate. And it's real important that when you're pressing off and pressing bearings back on that you don't forget to put this plate in between the axle flange and the bearing. And in many cases, uh, some of the aftermarket disc brake kits, the caliper mount also has to go in here before you put the bearing on. Just something to think about. 